Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we have a little bit of a showdown. We're looking at two of my favorite bull pups. Now, bull pups is, in general, I've never been really fond of. I don't know, maybe it's a psychological thing with having 52,000 to 55,000 PSI right under your cheek. I think probably the, the biggest thing for me is there's just no way to be comfort, to comfortably manipulate one when the magazine is behind you. You're, you're always having to bring the gun down. You have you know, your controls are in awkward positions. When you compare that to you know an M4, for instance, with these things, you're basically fumbling around with them, uh, trying to get them to work uh, and trying to get anything done with them efficiently. But that's not how a lot of countries feel. Now, over my career, I've had an opportunity to fire most every one of these, uh, including the uh, the FAMAS, the L85A1, um, we have the Tavor, we have the Hellion, the Steyr, uh, AUG. I've had an opportunity to fire all of them in the past, and I have to say, we're bringing down right here my favorite too. Now, the Steyr, Steyr AUG was probably the first one in the market. It was used by the Austrian army. Uh, it probably was the most simple uh, of all of these, and it did have a removable barrel. Um, and it was adopted by several countries. One of the things I found with uh, the ones that I had shot that was very unnerving was the way the trigger mechanism worked. Basically, the trigger was in two stages. Your first stage was semi-automatic. Then you could pull the trigger back, and it was fully automatic. So that was sort of a hard, it was hard to get used to. But that was also the first weapon that I'm aware of uh, in a NATO country where an optic was, was standard on it. It basically had a little donut of death where you had you know a circular donut on, on the optic, and everyone came with it. Uh, for instance, the current uh, contracts in New Zealand. In New Zealand, they had, uh, they had used uh, some of the Steyr AUGs uh, in their military. They were recently replaced by the LMT external piston system. So, you know, they they are still in existence. Uh, the Steyr AUGs uh, they are available here in the country. They're still being manufactured, so you still can get them. Uh, proprietary magazines, for the most part, uh, the gun is a little more. It's it's a little it feels a little bit more flimsy because it's you don't have as much to hold on to you have to hold on to a vertical pistol grip you can't hold on to it like a regular rifle you know either so I think the ergonomics in there I just wasn't nearly as fond of. Next one I had a chance to mess around with was the FAMAS. The FAMAS was the issued gun for the French Army. I had had the opportunity to to look at one of those overseas and uh, I had a chance to shoot them and uh, did not care for that one bit. Um, the cyclic rate was way out of this world. Uh, you're looking at 900 to 1100 rounds a minute. The operating system was a little bit different. It was a lever operated delayed blowback. Uh, so the system was extremely fast. The gun was extremely cumbersome. Uh, it was, uh, I just felt that it was very uncomfortable to shoot, uh, which has been replaced by the uh, HK416 in the French Army. So the next one we had to take a look at was the British. Uh, the British have had the L85 or the SAA type for quite some time. Now, uh, that gun has had serious problems over the years. Uh, in fact, uh, it wasn't really fixed until the uh, A1 model when H&K came in to do some work on it to get it to work. Um, I had had a chance to use those overseas as well as here in the States. Now, you saw from the video, you know, it, it does fire uh, at a reasonable rate of fire. The gun's basically an AR-18. That's a bullpup version of an AR-18. Um, in fact, I burned my hand on the way the handguard was on it. Um, that gun, too. It was also, I felt, uh, of all the ones that were out there, it was probably a little bit better to, uh, to me in feel than the uh, FAMAS. But you know, neither one of those guns were still where you know where I was really really fond of them. So the next one we're going to take a look at is what we see here. We're going to take a look at the Tavor. Now, the Tavor you see here, basically we have here is the Tar Twenty One. This was the first version of the of the, of the rifle that came out. Now, there's a couple versions of the Tavor. This is the Tar 21, and you also have the current one, which is the X95. Now, at the time when uh, I got these, uh, I got both at the same time, the Tar 21 and the X95. And the one I decided to keep in my collection was the Tar 21, because this was the original version of it. Uh, the X95 is the more, uh, is the accepted version of it. The original one was adopted in very small numbers. It was uh, one of the first 
actually issued Israeli guns. Uh, if you go back in time to the Galil, the Galil was developed in Israel, but very few of them were ever built. Uh, and they were used in favor of, of the M16 and M16A1s that were used in the Israeli army for quite some time. And now the uh, the newer Tavors, the new uh, X95, that's the one that's being uh, it's facing out in the M16s, and they're going with uh, you know a homegrown weapon. Now this rifle here, uh, overall, um, I think it had a decent feel to it. Um, it was a little bit bulky, very heavy on the back end. And heavy on the back end obviously is a good thing because of the fact that uh, that's where your center of gravity is going to be. You're able to have a longer barrel. Uh, you have uh, this takes the mag magazines, which uh, again you look at the uh, the FAMAS. The FAMAS took its own magazine. You look at uh, the Steyr AUG. That took its own magazine. This one here and the uh, and what we're looking at is the VHS or the Hellion used the Stenag magazines. So taking a look, of course, we have the magazine in the rear. Now the magazine here again was Stenag. Uh, the Stenag magazine was was used on both the uh, the ones we have here, both the VHS or the, uh, the Croatian Hellion, as well as the Tavor. The magazine we have in here is actually an Israeli magazine. Cocking handle on the left hand side. Now it was uh, this is non reciprocating. Now, as far as the rail is concerned, there's a couple different versions that you can get with this one. This happens to be the one that I got, and we have a Israeli-made red dot on here as well. You do have backup sights on here that do flip up. They do flip up in the front as well in the rear. So you will actually have backup sights, and with this optic here, you can have, have uh, co-witness. Now this is a rudimentary backup sight. This is one. This is one aperture. Uh, you do have an adjustable for elevation on the on the front, but again, these are totally total backup sights. Now the way this will work is you have a, a back button here, front button here, through your magazine that drops your magazine out. Now if you want to close the bolt, you have a button here that you're able to hit that's going to actually close the bolt. Now that is one feature that I did like about the Tavor was of all the ones that I I had, this was probably the easiest one to manipulate the bolt catch. The magazine release I thought was pretty good as well because it was natural for your hand to go on there to rip it out. Now the things that I did not care for had a lot to do with the way that it would feel. You don't have a lot of real estate up here. You also don't have as much space up here for, for your, your, force, your force multipliers such as your optics and such. Now you do have a good cold hammer for its barrel, uh, 556 NATO. Your safety is located here. The safety on this one is relatively easy to, operate, relatively easy to manipulate. You don't have to take your, your hand off the uh, pistol grip to do it. And for as far as the way the trigger is concerned, I did, I did particularly like having a regular trigger guard. This this was a little bit uh, this was a little bit off for me. However, uh, you know, for as far as recoil is concerned and balance, I mean, it's a, it's certainly a very good rifle. Uh, you're able to swap out barrels. You have a key here that allows you to swap out barrels to, from this to nine millimeter. Um, the rifle overall is an excellent rifle, like any bullpup is for being um, being in vehicles, for being mounted, and for close quarter battle scenarios. So if we take this to the range, we're going to fire a few shots. We're going to put a few shots to the Tavor Tar 21. Uh, you can also notice we have a Mepro Light, which is also an Israeli made uh, red dot sight. Uh, this is specifically one that was adopted by the Israeli Defense Force. Uh, we have an Enforced Light, I believe, is the manufacturer of that. We also have a uh, Fab Defense uh, podium for the Tar 21, which is uh, it's a bipod, and I have to say I've come to appreciate that quite a bit. Uh, the ammunition we're using is uh, ZQI 62 grain 5.56 NATO.
Now overall, um, I've never had any problems with these. Uh, now this is not the only one that I've fired. I have fired these overseas as well, uh, the selective fire versions. Um, again, they were very, very rare. We didn't, I did not come across them too often. Uh, and uh, only being around Israel once, uh, and that's not what I saw when I was over there. Uh, what I saw over there were these guys carrying M16s. Uh, I never really saw any towards, I definitely never saw any Galils. Uh, the Galils I only saw when I would go to other countries where they were in use. Uh, so, this probably here is, uh, what, this is one of my favorite of the, of the two. Now what we have is the Croatian VHS. This is basically a commercial version of the VHS that's used by the Croatian Army. Now, I was over in uh, Croatia a few times, uh, and I had seen these uh, in use, got a chance to shoot them over there. And I had to say I was really impressed with them, uh, for as far as the bullpup was concerned. This one was the most comfortable that I thought. Now, the commercial version that you see here is a little bit different from the military version of the rifle. Uh, the military, rifle, military version has a little bit different of a pistol grip. Um, it has a little bit different the way that the rails are in the front. This one's more geared towards the commercial market with having the M-lock in the front and having the pistol grip. Now this came with a BCM gunfighter pistol grip, which I got rid of very, very quickly. I don't care for those at all. And I put on one of the Mayans, and the Mayan happens to be my favorite of all time for as far as uh, pistol grips to put on any, any kind of a firearm. Now this one here has a lot of benefits, um, in my opinion, over the Tavor. You know, first off is being left and right shooting. Now we can see it from the video, we're going to see this thing fired uh, from the right hand, and we're going to see it fired from the left hand position. Now, converting over to, to left, the gun is, ex is exactly mirrored. Just by swapping out where you have your ejection port cover and on this locking up and rotating your bolt to the other side, you're able to fire, uh, you know, fire this entire firearm uh, in a left-handed. Your safety, everything is going to be uh, manipulated by somebody who's a left-hand, so it doesn't make a difference whether you're left or right-handed with it. Also, due to the fact that there are those of us who are fairly large stretched, well, pretty large stature, you have an ability to have more adjustments uh, on the rear of the stock versus the Tavor. Tavor, you have no adjustments whatsoever. Now, why is that good? Well, you have people like me who have very long arms. Uh, second of all, you see, a lot of the reasons you see these stocks that are like this is because you have people wearing body armor. And the body armor enables you to uh, be able to close this thing up so it's going to be close to you, where, close to you so you can use it with the body armor. Where if you don't have body armor, you're going to put it further out. So you do have that ability. Now, to manipulate this one, this is very similar to the G36 for as far as the way that the charging handle goes. Now this is left or right. It can be used as a forward assist as well if you if you so needed to, which you generally don't. It's useless. Now the one thing I did not care about this was the safety. The safety is very difficult to manipulate and I have relatively large hands. 
So that's probably the one thing I did not like. For as far as the pistol grip and the trigger, I liked it quite a bit. Now, for as far as backup sights are concerned, these backup sights are much nicer than that of the, the, uh, the Tavor. Uh, these, will, these will engage. You have uh, different apertures on here. Uh, so you have the elevation. You have windage on the side. Another benefit that you have with this gun here is you have uh, adjustable gas blocks. You have two positions. Now, you're going to see in the next video, you're going to see us firing this one suppressed. Uh, this being an external piston gun, the Tavor was a, was a long stroke piston. What you're seeing here is a short stroke piston. Uh, so you're not getting the, you know, the gas back like you would with an internal piston. With the suppressor on there and the way this is set up on here, I got very little gas back in the face. So this gun works very well uh, suppressed. You also look at the, this is not so much, so much of a carrying handle, but you have a lot of real estate on here to use different types of optics. We have just a, a red dot on here, but you can also put in front of it, you can put a, a, you know, an IR or <coughs> laser pointers on either one of the sides. Here we have one of the flashlights on the front. Where you know, when we grip over the side, we can we can get a hold of it like so. Um, overall, I have to say this one is my favorite. I remember being in Croatia and seeing uh, the people from the company that makes it, uh, and seeing these guns sitting in water and the kind of torture testing that have been done on them. It hasn't seen a lot of a lot of a lot of overseas work. Uh, that's the one thing that it has not seen. However, uh, they have been they have seen use for the Croatian army throughout the world, uh, especially with the global war on terror. So both of these guns have seen combat. I have to say, probably uh, this has seen a little bit more than, than the Fort to War Tar 21, but um, you know, the X95 probably sees it a lot more than any of the other ones, just due to the fact that they're in use in Israel every single day. So we're going to talk about uh, the two of them, maybe do a little bit of comparison in statistics. So looking at the two, we're looking at caliber, both 5.56 by 45. Uh, the Tavor has the ability to go to, to 9 millimeter operation. The Tavor, long stroke gas operated. The Hellion, short stroke gas operated. Both magazines use Tanag Air 15 M16 uh, Nino magazines. Both are multi lug bolts. Uh, both these are semi automatic only. Now, as far as the barrels are concerned, this is where it's a little bit different. Uh, the Tavor probably got a little bit nicer of a barrel being a 16 half inch 1 7 chrome molly vanadium cold hammer forged chrome line barrel. You have a really good military grade barrel in the Tavor, where you have a 16 inch 1 7 inch Swiss chrome molly vanadium uh, with a melanite coating for the Hellion. Adjustable gas blocks, you do not have that for the Tavor, but you do have a two position for the Hellion. The overall length on the Tavor, 26 and 1 of an inch. Uh, you have no adjustable positions. For the Hellion, you have 28.25 at the low end, and then with a fully extended, 29.75. Weight, both comparable. Looking at the Tavor at 7.9 pounds and the Hellion at 8 pounds, both have folding backup sights. Cost, these guns are both similar in cost. You're looking at an MSRP of 1822 on the uh, Tavor versus 1999 for the Hellion. Now we're not going to get into this assembly of these, uh, reason being is we have two videos that are out on both of these where you can see how, how they're taken apart. For as far as maintenance is concerned, you have a, little, a few less parts on the Tavor uh, because you, you have less parts. The Hellion, you can get to things a little bit more, more easily as you can see when it comes apart. Overall, I have to say I prefer the VHS for the Hellion. Uh, I felt that it is more, it's a more comfortable gun, it's easier to manipulate. You know, the parts that I did not like about it was the way the, the bolt release was. You know, that was probably the one thing I think they screwed up pretty bad uh, with this one here. Because basically what you have, uh, if you want to release the bolt, it comes back like so. Basically you have to pinch this in the rear. And that's a little bit harder to use than the, with the Tavor where you're just able to smack it up. That's one of the flaws on here. And I think also uh, the, the magazine release is comparable. The only difference is that the Tavor is more like a trigger on the front, where this one's more of a trigger on the back to the move. But the, the overall feel, uh, the way that it balances, uh, having the bigger hands and having it uh, the way that it sits. Uh, I do like having the two position adjustable gas block. I just think overall this one offers more uh, features. It is a little bit uh, a little bit longer. You're getting the ability to have, a, to have an adjustable stock for telescopic to compensate for you know, your stature or if you're using body armor. It's more universal. Now, comparing it to the, just the X95, now the X95, I don't think, in my opinion, would change any, anything at all. The only thing the X95 probably would have uh, over this would be uh, an easier to manipulate uh, magazine release because it's going to be the same place as an Air 15 M16 in the front rather than on the rear. So you still would be able to uh, have to hold the gun like this, drop your magazine out, insert it from here, put your bolt catch at the, at the side. It might be a little bit more easy to manipulate uh, versus the way these are. But overall, the same features would not sway me uh, in, the, in, the, in the direction of the Tavor. 
Now, I was very happy to see that these were brought into the country. I, you know, I remember in Croatia looking at those, thinking, "I wish they would bring these into the country." Yeah, you know, I guess I knew Springfield Armory. You know, we were getting, we're getting their pistols from Croatia, but I never really thought they were going to bring in the rifles because the rifles have been out for quite some time. So I was ecstatic when I saw this came into the country. Um, this is certainly one that's in my collection and it will always stay. Uh, this truly is my favorite bullpup. I have had the opportunities uh, throughout my career to fire all the major ones. Uh, again, we talked about before the Steyr AUG, the FAMAS, the, the, uh, the L85A1 slash SA80, Tavor, uh, the VHS. I've had a chance to use pretty much all of them. Um, I have not really ever messed around with any of the the, the Desert Tech or the uh, the Bushmaster ones. I only looked at military you know, military versions. The ones that are actually used by militaries, not commercial. Um, these have all actually seen combat, uh, so these are the ones that I've, I've pretty much focused on. So again, we, we have two videos, one on each of these where you can get more into detail for as far as this assembly uh, and some more of the shooting, but uh, you've sort of got the idea. But again, this showdown, uh, it was pretty much not much of a no-brainer for me. Uh, I didn't like the VHS or the Hell even much better. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you please click like, please subscribe, even better share.